Good morning. This is me, Adam Gross, at Space 1028 in East Hollywood, and we're getting ready to take down the exhibition El Nopal Selections, which features 30 years of prints uh, made by El Nopal Press and Francesco Siqueiros in downtown Los Angeles. And uh, I thought I would just capture the, the exhibition in the hopes of sharing it with others and capturing it for posterity. So here I am, quickly just giving a quick survey of the, I don't even know how many works are included, but um, there is, we can, we can actually count, but we won't do that. Um, these are works by Anita Bunn. I'm gonna make another video that has a little bit more detail in it where I can speak a bit more about the prints. Um, this is her native plant series, I think really exceptionally beautiful. This is work by Lisa Adams. These are monotypes, so each one of these prints has a, a uniqueness to them. These are wood blocks by Roger Herman, really exceptionally printed. And he's using, um, not to, not to uh, reveal the secret, but he's using uh, sheets of plywood to make these, uh, to make the, the original plates, basically. And you can see that texture in the, in the surface of the print itself. Five different images, one in each color, and each image is done in each color as well, if that makes sense. Then we get into the area that's a little bit more pop oriented. So uh, Derek Bochet, uh, Lino Cut, I believe it is, from 2003. This piece by Glenn Kino, which is pretty spectacular. Solomon Huerta. I just love how you get that brown by mixing the, uh, the purple and the orange. Two beautiful works by Harry Gamboa Jr. Um, this is two out of five, but I just didn't have room to do them all from 2005. This is one of my faves and I think something that, that everyone loves in some capacity or can appreciate. This is, if you can read it, the home of Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, Wayne Manor, Gotham City. This is the, um, this is the imagined floor plan by Mark Bennett of what the, I think this is from the 60s TV show, because I mean, there you go, there's the lava generator and the, uh, the Batmobile. And then around the corner are works by John Baldessari. I'll make a separate video about these. Um, this one, from what I gather and what I've, I've kind of surmised, this one right here, is um, John, uh, an allegory for John and his painting practice or his art making practice. So if you wanna hear more about that, I'll do a, I'll do a unique piece about that. Um, these are two prints from his Double Bill series in 2012. This little grouping here is work by Analia Saban. Um, these are rather important, especially these two prints. I believe these are the first prints that she ever does. And you can see how she is, um, these point the way towards uh, greater evolutions in her practice and how many of the elements that she explores here uh, become incorporated into her practice. A simple gesture of a chiffonier of a dresser and a, a, what seems like a dresser drawer being opened made with, I think, one, two, three, four simple folds. Liat Yosefor, a print which uh, reflects a, what's the word for it, a performance that she does. The performance is, from what I understand, basically private, but in this case, um, the, the, this, these are the marks left by that performance. Renee Petropolis, uh, a mock-up of her viewing station from the United States to Mexico, which incorporates collage, uh, lithography, and then digital printing up here. Great statement on the things that divide us, the border, the border wall. 
Pablo Ortiz Monasterio, S y no es. I always think of this as to be or not to be, but it's not, I don't think it's quite that. But I love this little photo. It reminds me of a Blossfeld photo, which I don't know if you recall, but over here is a reference to Blossfeld as well. I don't know what the significance of that, the fact that you've got two, two artists separated by several years and have, uh, playing with the same ideas. Um, this is work by Ruben Ortiz Torres, Think of this as entertainment on one side of the border, on the San Diego side of the border maybe, the American side of the border, and then entertainment on the Mexican side of the border. Aceite y sangre. So oil and blood. Che Guevara's handprints from when he was arrested, I think back in 1933, and then Ruben's handprints, and then Ruben being handprinted. It's all as one piece. I've spoken at some length about the, uh, the American flag, so if you're interested in learning more about that, just go check out some of our other videos. These are two pieces done by Francesco Siquieros, and these are, frankly, when I talk to other printmakers about these, the technical skill involved in making prints with this kind of gradation and these kind of mixes of colors is really, exceptionally difficult. And uh, here, Francesco does a beautiful job of exploring. Also, the idea of comedy and entertainment and how it links us all. So, Canten Flas on the bottom, and Charlie Chaplin on the top. And then two works by Dr. Lacra, a uh, fine artist, but also tattoo artist, and I shouldn't even make a distinction at this point. He shows with Curry Manzuto in Mexico City. Uh, just a wonderful guy and a great artist. I've worked with him in the past. And then to finish it off, this beautiful little work by the Winter Office, which is a collaborative group out of Denmark. And here they are making a print of a photograph of a hologram, no, a holograph, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a, a weed indigenous to, or a plant indigenous to um, Denmark. And, and here what Francesco has done, and you can sort of see the blue, He's, uh, he's put layer after layer of blue ink to get this kind of silky surface, this almost reflective surface. And then on top of that has layered blue and white ink. And you can kind of see it turning white here as it's trying to, um, what's the word for it, the color correct. But, but what he's doing is putting lighter color inks on top of darker color inks, which is basically something that one doesn't do in printmaking, but what he does is make something that is absolutely exceptional. I wasn't familiar with the winter, with the winter office until I saw this print and then uh, was absolutely captivated by them. So that's, uh, that's all I got for the moment. I just wanted to give this quick tour of what we, what we did here for El Nepal Press. It was a real treat. Um, I've been honored to work with Francesco, with Anita, with Liat, with all the artists that are involved, and um, I take it down with some sadness, but uh, I'm also thrilled because the next show is work by Shane the Fog. It's a, a one-picture show that'll feature a, a large and beautiful um, painting that really ideally should be seen in person, but considering the times, we'll do our best to convey them to you um, digitally and via video, etc. So if you like what you have heard here, um, you know, like the video, subscribe. Uh, we don't do a lot of videos. It's really just me. So um, I do what I can, and I look forward to sharing more with you. So thank you very much, and uh, happy day.